presented by Church Tech U, it's Tech No Babble. On today's show, how much latency does the Sling Studio introduce and how can you overcome it? Hi and welcome again to Tech No Babble. This is the original, longest running, except no imitations, Church Tech show created in 2005 for church techies like you. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. The Sling Studio is meant for two uses, live streaming and recording but you might want to show it live. So how much latency is there, really? And are there any tricks to overcome it? So let's head over to my computer to find out. Let me tell you how I'm doing this. I have a countdown with a number for each frame up on the right screen coming through ProPresenter. And... On the left screen, I have the output of the program coming through the Sling Studio. Now I'm going to freeze the frame here and show you exactly how much latency is in here. And I'm going to do it two or three times just so that we can get a running count of how much latency is available and showing. Normally you would want to keep it under two frames. Just looking at this, it looks like we're dealing with around a second, maybe more, of latency between these two. So this is the program out. This is coming from the source. How can you get those to match a little bit better? If you go into the Sling Studio itself, right now we have the program on the monitor on the left. What we want to do is we want to change that to mirror exactly what comes in to the Sling Studio. So in order to do that, you would go to HDMI out and change this from program video to HDMI pass through. So we're going to click on that and click OK. Now, let me show you exactly what happens when we do this. Three, two, one, click OK. And it blinked for just a second. And now we should have about the same. So 304, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So now these two are the same. That's good. So what you would do is you put your close-up shot coming into the Sling Studio into the HDMI port and send that out the HDMI port as well and then onto your screen. Then, if you need to transition shots, which you're going to want to do almost not at all, you'll want a wider shot. Um, So I actually have a wider shot here. You'll want a wider shot. And then you'll put that into program. And then go into window in the Sling Studio and HDMI out, change that to program, and that's how you take your wider shot. And you'll notice that in doing that, you can't really see all the details as well. You wouldn't want to take a closer shot because that would show you where you have latency. And then you can go back to Window, HDMI out, HDMI pass through for the closer shot. Click OK, and that brings it back. There might be a little bit of a glitch. This isn't a permanent solution. This is a you have no other choice and all you have is a Sling Studio kind of solution. So ideally, you wouldn't use the Sling Studio for iMag. But there are certain situations where you have no choice, and this is a hack to get past that problem. 
When it comes to iMag image magnification, you need as little latency as possible. If you have too much, the subject will start to look like he or she is in a badly dubbed foreign film. That's not something you want. So, if you're in that situation, maybe the Sling Studio isn't the piece of gear to use. Try something else instead. If you'd like to learn more about this cool piece of tech, head over to my article on churchtechtoday.com, link below in the show notes, or keep watching for more tutorials like this one. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with trinitydigitalmedia.com and churchtechu.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.